All right, this video is on the uh, derivation of the law of sines. All right, so before we get there, we're going to make a note that a triangle that is not a right triangle is called an oblique triangle. So up to this point, we've been playing mainly with right triangles, so now we're going to go on and talk about all the other triangles, right? And so all, they're just all called oblique triangles, all right? So all right, make a note. To solve an oblique triangle, and what that means is we're looking for all six parts of the triangle. Whenever we solve a triangle, we're looking for um, what all three angles are and what all three sides are. Okay. So to solve an oblique triangle, we need to know the measure of at least one side and any two other parts of the triangle. Okay. So we have to know at least one side. Right? And then you could have two angles and another side or two other sides. So essentially what happens is we have four possibilities. I have abbreviated here. All right, so one one possibility is we could have a side angle angle, right? Or we could have angle side angle. All right, or we could have say no two sides and and then the next angle side side angle. So we know two sides in a row and then the next angle, right? Or we might know a side angle side and this time the angle is in between two sides, right? So like a side here, a side there, you know the angle in between. And then the fourth one here is you know all three sides. You know the, the links of all three sides, but you don't know any angles. All right? And so these first two here, we're going to be able to solve um, using the law of sines. Okay, so these first two situations where you know a side and then two angles in a row, or you know an angle and then a side and then the next angle, or you might know two sides in a row and then the next angle. Right, those two situations can be solved using the law of sines. These last two situations down here can be solved using the law of cosines, which we'll see in another video. All right, so let's go on to a derivation of the law of sines. All right, so you got a triangle, uh, and you have an oblique triangle. So I've labeled the, the three angles here, capital A, capital B, and capital C. Uh, and then, um, because it's not a right triangle, I'm going to throw in the, the height here of the triangle and make a little 90 degrees down here, and we're just going to call this point down here D. And what that's going to do is, is separate this up into, we have like two triangles. Triangle here, two triangle here, two right triangles actually, right? Okay, so typically the way we label sides, uh, we use lowercase letters, and the side opposite angle A is going to be called little a. And the side opposite angle C is called little c. And the side opposite angle B, down here I didn't label it because I've got the D there, but this side over here would be called little b. All right, so uh, this would be the height of our triangle. And so what do we know? Well, in triangle A, D, B, we know that the sine of A, right, sine of A, we're just looking at this right triangle right here, the sine of A is equal to what? H over C. Everybody see that? Opposite over hypotenuse. In triangle CDB, so that would be this triangle, this one right here, okay, the sine of C is equal to what? H over A, right? Side opposite C over adjacent, so opposite over adjacent. All right, so this implies then that h is equal to little c times the sine of a, and h is equal to little a times the sine of c, right? If you just isolate h for both of those little equations right there. Well, then, if both of these things are equal to h, then c sine a has to equal a sine c. Right? And then to rewrite this a different way, I'm just going to I'm just going to kind of write the following. So I'm going to divide both sides by sine a and divide both sides by sine c. And when we do that, we've got a over sine a equals little c over sine c. Everybody see that? Now we go from this line to this line. All right, so this has to be a true a true statement, a true proportion, right? The, the ratio of a side and then divided by the sine of the angle opposite that side is equal to another side, uh, the ratio of another side divided by the sine of the angle opposite that side. Okay, 
So really what this means is we can generalize this up into what's called the law of sines. In any triangle ABC with sides little a, little b, and little c, and make note little a is opposite is opposite angle A, little b is opposite angle B, and little c is opposite angle C. Then this is a true statement. We, we can derive it, we can switch the, the triangle around and draw the H like this up here like this and make a right angle and involve the B situation. So we can go and derive it another way to get the B involved if you, if you want. Essentially what it boils down to is you have all these little proportions, right? So you have side A over sine of angle A is equal to side B divided by the sine of angle B, which is also equal to side C divided by the sine of angle C. Now alternatively, we could have just as easily said sine A divided by A equals sine B divided by B equals sine C divided by C, right? These two things are the same thing, we just rewrote them a different way. So it doesn't really matter, what's important is the ratio. Note that the angle and the side opposite go together, right? You have the sine of the angle divided by the side opposite that angle is equal to the sine of another angle divided by the side opposite that angle. No matter which way you write it, it doesn't really matter, but note that A goes to A, B goes with B, and C goes with C. All right, so that's the derivation of the law of sines. Make sure you check out the next video for some examples of, um, of the law of sines. Study well, and let me know if you have any questions.